Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I wanted to show you how I made this little haunted Halloween house using some of the brand new Tim Holtz Halloween collection. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you another version of this house that I made previously. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by using the Sizzix Tim Holtz die and it makes these little houses and this is from the Biggs L collection. And this is called Tiny Houses. And this is a steel rule die. And we're going to go ahead and die cut that out of, out of the Tim Holtz heavyweight 110 pound mixed media cardstock. So I've gone ahead and die cut the pieces and you need two of those panels with the peaks for the houses on them. And then I'm going to take this brand new paper pack called Abandoned. And this is from the Ideology Collection. And we're going to use this piece here, which I just think is absolutely gorgeous. So what I like to do is just add my decorative paper to the house. Um, I just find that if I die cut the house out of something heavyweight and add my decorative paper to that, I get a nice secure house. So I've taken a piece of vellum paper and I also ran that through my die cutting machine. And I'm just using this to determine what areas of this decorative paper I want to cut out. So I've trimmed off the two side panels on this uh, piece here. I'm just keeping the peak part of it and the front of the house. And I'm going to uh, trace this out on my decorative paper. And using the vellum paper just allows me to see through so I can see exactly where I'm positioning it on my decorative paper. And I'm using a pencil just to trace this out. And I'm going to trace this out two times. Once for the front of the house and one for the back of the house. And if that's not clear, you'll see what I mean in a minute here. So I'm going to finish tracing this out. And then I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut out those two panels. So now you'll see those will fit right on the front of the house and on the back. Now I also need two pieces for the two side panels and those will measure three and five eighths by one inch. So you want to cut two of those little side panels. Now for the roof, I'm going to be using the back side of that paper that we just used. So I'm flipping it over and I'm just going to cut it to the exact size of the roof. And that panel measures one and a quarter inches by five inches. So I'm going to fold that in half on the score line and press that out. So I'm folding both pieces and then that piece of paper is going to fit right over the other one there. So now I can take my house and I can finish this up here. I'm going to press out these score lines. So I'm just folding on each of the score lines. And this is going to form the shape of the house here. So you can see how that's going to go together now. Now I'm going to take my Distress Oxide ink. So I've gone ahead and I attached those panels to my house and to the roof. But I noticed there was a lot of white showing or the creamy color showing. So I'm taking the Distress Oxide Black Soot ink and I'm using my foam applicator tool. And I'm just going to go around all the edges of this house and just take that kind of creamy color away. And it'll give it a little bit more of an aged effect as well. So now using these little uh, witches here, these are from the Paper Dolls Halloween collection. This is the Ideology collection. And I just love these two little witches here. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this, my black pen, and I'm just going to go all around the edges of that die just to take that white edge away. Now I'm using the Gina K foam squares to pop this up on the front of my house. And I'm also going to cut this down a little bit because obviously it's a little too tall for the house. So I'm going to flip this over and just draw a pencil line there and take, use my scissors to cut away that excess. And then I'm going to continue putting the foam squares here. So I'm removing the backing from all of those little foam squares and I'm going to attach this lining it up at the bottom there of the front panel of my house and sticking it down. And I just love that. So just a little bit more of the foam applicator at the bottom. 
Now I'm going to use my score tape, and this is the one quarter inch score tape. I'm going to place that on each of these two side tabs. I'm just making sure it goes all the way end to end and just cutting off any excess here. You want to make sure that you use enough tape here and a nice sturdy tape because you want this to last. And now I'm going to line these two up, making sure they're nice and straight and the bottoms are lined up. And then I'm going to attach these two panels together. Now I'm removing the backing from this last little tab and then I'm just going to form the shape of the house here. And you can see there that we have the basic shape of the house and our roof is going to sit right on top there. So I'm going to be using my multi-medium mat and this is a clear glue and I'm going to put some little beads of glue all the way around the top of that house. And although it looks like it wouldn't really hold it, it really does. This is a heavyweight glue. It's going to hold this in place. Just want to make sure you carefully just put dots of it all along the roof line there. And then I'm going to just place that panel on the top of that and just position it. Just slide it around a little bit till you get it exactly where you want it. And then you will have to hold it for a minute or two here just to make sure that it's dry. So now I'm going to go on to the die cut. This is the Thinlets Sizzix Gothic Gate. And I've gone ahead and die cut that out of 100 pound black cardstock. And then from this Sizzix Thinlets die, I'm going to be die cutting the spider web, also out of the black 100 pound cardstock. And then I did go ahead and die cut these little bats, which in the end I did not use, but I thought I might use them. And they both came from the mixed media Halloween die set. So now that I've got my roof line is dry, I'm going to slide that little spider web right up into that peak of the house on the back side. And it's way too big, so I'm just going to cut it down to the size that I want. And that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to go back to my multimedia glue and I'm just going to attach that together. I'm just using my bone folder here just to make sure that it's pressed out nice. And then I'm reaching inside so that I can kind of push on it from both sides here just to make sure it's nicely attached. So now I'm going to do the same thing here with my gothic gate and that's going to wrap around the sides of my house. So I'm just going to put little tiny dots of glue all over the back of this then I'm centering it on the back of my house. I'm pressing that down and then I'm just going to kind of push these two sides around the edge here using my bone folder again just to press from the inside to the outside and then I'm just going to kind of with my fingers here just press this down into place. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing for the other side here just pressing this down. So there you can see that looks really good. I love how that looks. So now I want to add a word band from the Halloween collection. And this one here that I chose says Spells and Fortunes. And then we're also going to be using the Halloween trimmings in the black and orange. So I'm going to take this cording and I'm just going to loop it through so that it runs along the back side of the word band here. So I'm just sliding it through. And I'm just going to center it. And then I'm just going to wrap it around to the front here and tie a knot. And that's just going to secure it in place. Then once I have that tied, I'm just going to cut away that excess. I'm just going to trim that down. Now you can see how cute that is. 
So now I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to grab the frames. These are the vignette frames. And you get four frames in a pack. And I'm going to take that second largest one. I'm also going to be using the Distressed Paint from Tim Holtz in the Black Soot. And this is an acrylic paint. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this entire frame. Now the reason I'm painting this frame is I'm going to be using it as the base for my house. Now I'm going to touch this up with a little bit of rusty hinge and I'm just patting a little bit on my glass mat and I'm using my finger just to kind of pat it on here. So I did let that black paint completely dry before I started patting on this color here. And then I decided to take a little bit more and just kind of rub some around the edges and on the inside <clears throat> just to uh, just to give it a little bit more of an antique look. So you can see that up close there. So now I'm going back to the abandoned paper pack and I'm going to take this green, this beautiful like mossy green color. And that's going to be the base or the ground that for our house. So I just selected one little area of that and I just love how that looks. I just like that just by itself, but we are going to be doing some more with it. So I'm going to take my quarter inch score tape. So I attached that tape all around all four sides of my frame and I'm going to remove the backing and attach this panel. And this panel measures four and a half by three and a quarter. And then I decided that it just wasn't quite thick enough. So I'm adding another panel in the same exact size in a black 100 pound cardstock. And that's just going to give it a little bit more uh, security here. Just be a little bit thicker on the base. So now that I have that all set, I'm going to go ahead and attach my house. So what I want to do is add a bead of glue along the back side of the house because I'm going to be pressing it right up against that frame there. And then I'm also going to add some glue all around the bottom of the house as well. Just like we did for the roof, just some little beads of glue all the way around the bottom here. And then again, I'm going to slide it up towards the back of that frame because there is a little lip there that I can attach that to. And then I'm going to let that sit and dry. And that will take a little while to dry and you do want to hold it for a little while as well. So now I'm going to use the, t the tombstones from Tim Holtz and again from the Ideology Collection. And I'm just going to place one of those tombstones right here in the front of the house. Again, attaching it with my Ranger Multi-Medium Matte Glue. And again, you want to hold these pieces to make sure that they set. So it does take a few minutes here. And then I'm going to grab one of the metal gates. And I'm going to add some adhesive. And again, I have that nice lip on the frame here that I can attach this to. So I'm going to add some beads of glue right along the bottom of this fence, just about up to the height of that frame. So I don't need much, maybe about a half inch here. And then right along the bottom of the fence as well. And then again, I'm going to press that into place. And I'm going to hold this for a little while here to make sure that everything is secure. So next I wanted to show you how I made the flowers for the top of the house. I'm using my Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And I've got everything placed in my color catcher here. And I'm using Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn from the Distress Oxide Sprays. And I'm just going to spritz these colors on. I'm starting with my lightest color. And you do want to make sure you clean the nozzle on these really well when you're done using them. So take a baby wipe and just clean that nozzle off. And you want to shake them really well before you use them. And then what I did was I applied the two colors and I spritzed it with just a little bit of water from my Distress Sprayer. But you'll see later that I come back to that again. So now for my second set of colors, I'm using Fossilized Amber and abandoned coral. And again, starting with the lighter color and then adding a little bit of that darker color. And here what I decided to do was spritz it with some additional water. And 
I stopped there and then I decided what I really wanted to do was get this nice and wet so that all those colors would blend together and that they would oxidize a little bit to give me more of that chalky finish. So that's where I went back to the green paper and decided to do the same thing. Just give it a little bit more uh, spritz of water. So now using peeled paint and fossilized amber, I'm going to do the same exact thing. And these, all of these little pieces of paper here are going to create the foliage and the flowers. And now I decided to add a little bit of this darker color, the forest moss here, just to add a little bit more color. Now I've got abandoned coral, fossilized amber, and spiced marmalade. And I'm going to use these three colors to create a background. So what you want to do is just create a whole bunch of different backgrounds to die cut your flowers and your leaves and anything else that you, that you want to add to your little uh, floral arrangement here. So again, I'm going to let those colors blend together. And then I didn't want to let all this ink go to waste. So I spritzed it with a little bit of water. That's my uh, Ranger mat underneath there. So I'm going to spray it with a little bit of water and then take some additional scraps of paper here and just pick up those colors. And I thought some of these were actually the prettiest. So that's another way to apply the ink to your mat and then just pick it up. And again, I just didn't want to waste all of that color. And the next one here is the walnut stain, and that's going to be for some of the branches that we'll be creating. And I decided I wanted to pick up a little bit of that brown color as well. So now I'm going to let those set and dry. While I do that, I'm going to take the Sizzix Thinlets dies here. These again are Tim Holtz. And I'm going to be using the Funky Foliage set. So what, here are all those papers that have dried now. And you can see how cool all these different colors are. So we get a nice mix of light and dark. So we've got some greens there for the foliage some yellows and oranges for our uh, flowers, and then some brown there for the branches. So I've grabbed all of those dies, and I'm just going to start running these through and die cutting all of these little flowers. And you can see here all the little pieces that I have. And I've got lots of leftovers for some future projects, so I'm just going to put those in a little bin for later. So now I'm going to grab some Distress ink here. This is the gathered twigs, and I'm just going to give the a little bit of an antique aged look to each of these flowers. So I'm just going to kind of rub that all around the edges. And you can see when I assembled all these flowers how cute and whimsical they are. But we're going to give them a little bit more of an aged, antique kind of look. Just for our kind of spooky house. So that's why I'm adding the brown to all the edges of all these little flowers here. And all the branches and foliage as well. So now I just want to give a little bit of shape to my flower so I'm using my Sizzix sculpting mat and a couple of the sculpting tools and I will give you all the information for all of these products down below. Um, this set of tools does come with a, quite a few little pieces to it. And then I'm just pressing down, kind of pressing on each of the little petals there and then pressing in the center. And for these smaller ones, all I have to do is press down in the center. This one here, again, I'm just using that, that ball tip just to kind of press those little petals up. And then for the leaves, I'm using that kind of pointy end. And I'm just pressing down the center of each of these leaves just to give them a little bit of dimension there. And it sort of creates a little vein down the center. I'm going to do the same thing for these leaves here. So now I can go ahead and attach my leaves to these branches. And I'm just going to attach them with some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. Just putting a little bit of glue on the ends of each of the branches here and just adding my leaves.
And I'm going to do the same thing for this other one. I'm just cutting it down a little bit. I didn't. I don't think I need that whole piece. And I only had a couple leaves left, so I decided just to do a couple on that branch. So now those are all set. You can see those up close. So we're going to get some nice variations of color here. So now I want to go ahead and start attaching some different things to my house here. So I'm going to grab this Toil and Trouble. This is a quote chip, again from the Halloween collection. And you get all these fantastic quotes. And these are from, this is again from the 2019 collection. But I decided the edge is a little too white, so I'm taking my black soot distress oxide and I'm just going to go all around the edges of that with the black. And that's going to get attached right here to the fence on the front of my house. And I'm going back and using my adhesive, just placing it here on the fence, kind of on an angle. And then I'm just going to let that dry as well. So now I want to add my little skull fragments. And these are just so cool. I love these. And these are the new ones as well. They have a little bit of a flat bottom on them. And I don't know if you can see here, but I'm just tucking one in behind that tombstone and one on either side of it. And now I'm going to grab the new pumpkins as well. These are the pumpkin pieces. And again, they have that flat edge so that you can easily stack them up. And I'm going to antique those a little bit as well with my black soot ink. And I'm just going around, just kind of just going down the edges of these a little bit just to make them look a little bit older. And now those are going to get stacked up in the front of my house off towards the right hand side here. So I'm just going to go back to my multimedia matte glue and just kind of stack these up a little bit. And for that third one, I decided to put it over in front of the tombstones instead. So I've got the two on the right stacked up, and then I've got this third one kind of tucked in front of the tombstone here. So next, I'm going to take these little bones from the Boneyard collection, and I'm going to just apply a few of those down here in the front and one off to the back side there on the right-hand side. Now I can go ahead and attach all the flowers to the roof here. And just have fun with this. I'm using again the Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue, and that's going to hold these down permanently and it will dry clear. And you'll see here that I changed my mind several times and I put them on and take some off and just play around till you get the look that you're going for. That's the fun of this. I couldn't really decide where I wanted that, so I set it aside for now. And then there I changed my mind. I thought maybe I needed a yellow flower there instead of the two orange together. So I pushed that one off to the other side. So again, just have fun playing around with this. And then here I thought that the skull, I wanted a skull right there at the top. So I put a little bit of glue on the bottom. And since it is right at the peak, it did take a few minutes for that to set. So I did have to hold it for a little while there to make sure that it set properly. But with that flat bottom on it, it was pretty easy to attach. Now for this little branch here, I decided to tuck it down in the front of the house. And you'll see that here in a minute. Then I added that little flower to the quote chip that says toil and trouble on the front, just for a little bit more dimension. And then I just continued to add my flowers all the way around. So there you can see how cool that looks. I put some flowers towards the back of the house there too. 
And then I'm adding the Adornment Wicked. These are the spiders. And I'm going to add one of those spiders to this web in the back. At first I was going to tuck it up there in the corner, but then when I went to glue it on, for some reason I just changed my mind and slid it down towards the bottom of the web. And you'll see here, I decided to have it look like it was kind of like hanging down. And again, just pressing that into place and hold these for a minute. It does take a little while to dry. Now I'm going to grab the new Bitty Bats. And these are just so cool. So there's where you see I was going to use those bats from the die cut and change my mind. I decided I wanted something a little more three-dimensional. So I'm going to add these few one to that little uh, tombstone and then one to the roof of the house there. And then a third one to the right side of the house as well. And here you can see all the detail we have. I just love these two witches. And there's where I added that little branch. I just kind of folded it down towards the front of the house there. So we've got this great fun scene. So just have a blast with this. I did. It's just so much fun. You can add anything you want to these. And you try to use things that you already have. You know, if you have things in your collection, I know if you're like me, you've been collecting things forever. So this is a fun time just to pull out all those little goodies and start attaching them here. So you can see on the back, I added a few little leaves there too, just above that word band just to bring that color all the way around to the back. Now I want to show you another one that I did. This one I die cut a hole from the middle and then I took the owl, which was in one of the previous collections, one of the paper collections, and I tucked him in behind there, kind of to give it like a three-dimensional look. I used the same fence and then I created a little word banner with the word boo on it. And there are those bats that we die cut earlier on this one. And for the flowers, I die cut those out of the pattern paper instead and just attach those together. So there's another example, and that's a little bit of a simpler version of this one. I did not put it on a base. I just left it separate, and it stands up perfectly fine. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Again, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.